Hello everyone, today we're going to be starting off with the CPU scheduling algorithms and there are basically five CPU scheduling algorithms. The first come first serve, non-preemptive shortest job first, preemptive shortest job, shortest job first, round robin and prior to scheduling. Today we're going to be looking at first come first serve algorithm which is basically the easiest algorithm in uh, the CPU scheduling among the CPU scheduling algorithms. Alright, so we have the process here, the burst term here and the arrival term here and we need to find out the Gantt chart of this and we need to find out the waiting time for each processes and then eventually find the average waiting time. Alright, so in this case the arrival time matters because we always serve that process whichever comes first and we complete that process fully as it is. So the burst time for the first process is 5 and it's really big compared to 3. So your 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 logic would be like, why why not just execute 3 because it's smaller, let's just get rid of the shortest job first and then we can do the longer jobs. Well, we can, we'll come across that in the shortest job first algorithm, So, but in case of FCFS, we just execute the processes that come as 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 they arrive. Like uh, whatever, however long the process is, if they arrive first, they get the priority first. So let's draw the uh, gun chart for this, for, uh, sorry, okay, so for P1, the burst time is from 0 to 5, so 5 seconds are executed, for P2, it's 4, so 5 plus 4, 9, for P3, it's, 12, 9 plus 3, 12, and for P4, it's 12 plus 6, 18. Alright, so this is the gun chart that we, uh, that we like, pr produced after, you know, uh, getting all this, after using all this information. Uh, it's really easy, you just apply the, you just, this, this axis just contains the burst time, and these are the processes. So, according to the, to the FCFS, whatever process that come first, we execute them first. Now, let's find out the waiting time for each processes. Uh, so, let's just erase this out. and draw a column for the waiting time. So the waiting time for the first process is zero, uh, what you call it, is zero because the first process came at zeroth time and it didn't have to wait at all. It just executed however, like at what whatever time it arrived, it just executed at that time. So the waiting time for the first process is zero minus zero like the bur this burst time in the in the gun chart minus the arrival time here so it will be zero the waiting time for the first process is zero now it executed till five seconds all right but within that time the process p2 has already appeared in the queue i mean uh, has already appeared um, in the cpu so but we didn't we didn't like uh, we had to complete this whole process still five and then we we just started uh, what you call we, st we just started executing process p2 so it had to wait some amount of time right so five minus two is three so the uh, the what you call the waiting time for process p2 is three because the it had to wait three seconds to execute three more seconds to uh, like after after the after arriving at second after arriving at two seconds it had to wait three more seconds to get you know to get executed so five minus two is three so for p3 same way nine minus four is five it had to wait five seconds and for p4 uh, the what you call the arrive the waiting time is 12 minus six so six it had to wait six more seconds to get executed even though it arrived at sixth second it had to wait six more seconds. It started executing the twelfth second, the, the twelfth, uh, what you call it, second, yeah. So that's why it had to wait six more seconds longer uh, to be executed in the CPU. So yeah, this is the waiting time. Usually in the books, in the main book that you read for operating system, uh, the in there the arrival time is not even there. It's just burst time process. At that time, it's the easiest. If you have no arrival time. It means that all the processes came in this manner, in this sequence. So you just execute. You'll get the you'll get the same gun chart, but in that case, the arrival time will be uh, the waiting time will be different. 
How is it going to be? It's going to be like this. The waiting time for the first process is going to be 0. The waiting time for the second process is going to be 5. The waiting time for the third process is going to be 9. And the waiting time for the fourth process is going to be 12. Right? Because every, all of them appear at the same moment. They, they, what you call, they, they appear in this sequence, whatever uh, the sequence that's given. And they'll just be executed in that sequence. And they would, they would, have, they would have the waiting time like this. Since they have no arrival time. But in this case, when you have arrival time, you have to ex you have to uh, like subtract the arrival time from the visiting time. This is the visiting time, and this is the finishing time. Some uh, you can like while you're coding for coding like implementing this uh, through code, you'll see that this is the visiting time, this is the finishing time, visiting time, finishing time, visiting time, finishing time, and so on. All right, so that's about it for first come first serve. I hope you understood, and it's fairly easy. Trust me. When you go to shortest job first, non preemptive and preemptive, it's gonna look hell lot harder than this. So yeah, um, please don't forget to subscribe and give a thumbs up to this video, and good luck.